Welcome to Riverbend Town on WBGZ. Brought to you by the Helpin Music Company. That's right, another Riverbend Talent on a Thursday night from Alton, Illinois, brought to you by Halpin Music Company and by Mr. Matt Van Voorhis of uh, Town Club. We're going back to Town Club on this one. He picks someone different every week, or no, he doesn't even pick them. He just says, whatever you want to say. So we call him Matt Van Morrison. Matt Van 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 We call him Pigpen every once in a while. <laughs> Pigpen's here. The Sea Shanty sing along's underway already down in Morrison's Irish Pub. Trivia night later at the Conservatory. Open mic uh, later tonight, 9 o'clock at the Raging Cajun and all. And the Insiders uh, doing 7 to 11 at Fast Eddie's <coughs> in Alton. Kevin Wayne Gruen already underway at George's Local Brew in Jerseyville. Brother Kane, 30th anniversary tour. We're going to be talking wow. about a 30th anniversary here in just a minute. We right? are. Yeah. And this one's at the Wild E Theater. So uh, ah. Brother Kane's been, as, uh, been around as long as our guests. And we'll get to that in just a second as I finish up with Andrew Dahl, 6 to 9 at Big Daddy's in Edwardsville. Salmon Creek, 7 to 11 at Deutsch Village Inn and Pontoon Beach. Frankie and the House Shakers going until 9 o'clock at Patrick's in Granite City. Just be doing the speakeasy in Granite City. Not the speakeasy that our guest remembers from way back. This one's in Granite City. 6 to 10 uh, on that one. Blake Foltz is, uh, check this out, 5 to 9 at the cabin at Judy Creek. Then he's going to run over to the back bar and play till midnight in Edwardsville. Okay, now, according to this piece of paper, he's stopping at the cabin at 9 and starting at yeah. the back bar at 9. So he's he's quick. He has a portal. He is quick here's a portal <laughs> scott open the portal <laughs> oh i forgot my amp hold on <laughs> scott marlin uh will wrap up our list tonight at 7 p.m at the red bar in collinsville and uh we we've kept him in it uh suspense long enough some of our favorite guests of all time some of the legends of uh what we uh based riverbend talent on when we first uh, decided to do this show and that's guys with tons of experience that have uh, been all over that could come in here and uh, teach us how they did it pig pen and that's uh, <laughs> that's what rogers and Neenhouse have uh, done for us uh, over the years and it's, so, it's been so that leads us to the first question of the whole segment first, first terry rogers yeah man good to see you brother good to see you too uh, from, from of, of Rogers and Neenhouse. So that, right. that means that's, next to you. That's right. <laughs> this guy right there is the other half of Rogers and Neenhouse. That's uh, right. What is happening? How much, man? Good, good, to, good see to see you, Scott. Uh, Scott Neenhouse down there. So, so as he said, you know, we, we want to know how you did it. So the big question is, I want to do this thing that you're doing where you don't work and you <laughs> just, you know, turn like, you know, some some feelings you got into money somehow in, in a rhyme. I, I want to yeah, learn how to do that, too. I, I want to do that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, how do you do that, man? Uh, yeah, no so, matter how you look at it, there's some kind of work involved. Oh, that's right. You have no you know, idea. That's right. They've so, kind of answered that question in the past, and it's something we brag about all the time about our area there are a lot of opportunities uh, for musicians uh you know if they want to bend uh, whatever they do to fit certain venues there's a lot of venues so we just gave the thursday right. night on this side of the river not even touching the other side of the river and, right. and it was over a page long so there, there's you know there's stuff going on and we barely scratch the surface barely so 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 one thing we've said on this uh, program over the past 10 years many times is that a lot of us don't feel like we get paid to play. We get paid to move our equipment. We love to play. <laughs> oh, yeah. We always say that, that, that that's the part we get paid for, the moving the equipment, yeah. as you said. And we play the music for free. Sure. Because if you could just show up and everything was there, you wouldn't want... It wouldn't be quite as big of a deal. It's the work, and and, and when when a guy carries thirty guitars around, him, <laughs> it makes the work a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and and Scott, you've got. I don't know how many rooms in your house are filled with guitars. It's got to be more than one. Well, two. For sure. See, I, knew, I knew it was more than <laughs> you know. One. Yes, and that that one of those rooms is in a barn, which kind of gives you a clue that uh, it's a large room. Uh, yeah, I just want to say congratulations, thirty years. Oh, thank you. Uh, and. Uh, that's an amazing run for anybody, any relationship. <laughs> and we're not dead yet. Yeah. 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 And uh, you're, you're still we're getting along. Dead. Yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. <laughs> 
Well, we're both Geminis, so we always say there's actually four of us. So. Right. <laughs> now, we talked many times in the past uh, about this area and how many opportunities there were. Uh, uh, Terry Rogers, he, he comes from uh, Macon, Georgia. That's correct. Hung out with the Allman Brothers back in yeah, the day. Yeah, watched, yeah. Watched Dwayne in his jam room. <laughs> <laughs> can't get more into the Allman Brothers than that. But you know, I'm bringing it back here because the Allman Brothers love this area, too. That's right. Right. That's right. And so me and Pigpen, we've had you guys on for a while, but we never dove into this concept we've been building about the home of rock and roll being East St. Louis, yeah. Illinois. That's right. Yeah, right close to what we call the river bend right. now. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a few reasons we like to go that way. First of all, we interviewed Bonnie Bramlett, and she told us how she used to spend time in those clubs, and met Ike Turner there. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, that's in the fifties. Mm -hmm. That's pretty rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. You know who else was hanging out over there? A guy named Johnny Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Who one night his saxophone player had a stroke. And uh, so Johnny called up this kid named Chuck Berry mm -hmm. to play with him. This is like 52. Yeah. Wow. wow. Now, we know how much Scott Neenhaus likes Chuck Berry. Oh, yeah. Was, and and Johnny, Johnny Johnson, for those people who don't know out there, is the Johnny in Johnny Be Good. Uh, he's the one that that song is about. Yeah, for his drinking. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you got to be good something. It, yeah. And he, I, before he passed, I, I got to meet him a few times. Super sweet guy, gentleman, all the way through and through. Yeah. And as far as I can see, he wrote some songs on piano that Chuck Berry transposed a, a, a guitar and put a little distortion on that and and there we have the birth of rock and roll that's right uh, right right here in our own hometown or our own area right here and and it's amazing that st louis didn't get the credit for that and you know even prior to that we know or east st louis we know where it come from we stole it from <laughs> the blues yeah right? oh yeah right. that's right and you know the bluesmen were coming through here too that's George right. George Brock had clubs. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, and, and, uh, but and, they always point it towards St. Louis. And I got to thinking about that, and it, and it makes sense because you guys have traveled. Yeah. If you were going to tell somebody where you're from, you wouldn't yeah. say Alton, Illinois. You'd say St. Louis. Louis. Sure. That's true. Right. Yeah. So. Everybody knows it. We're, we're busting the truth out there, though, guys. <laughs> Home of rock and roll, you St. Louis. <laughs> well, I tell you, I've been bragging about the Midwest since I've been living up here just because there's never been any place that I've been, including Macon, Georgia, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, Nashville, Tennessee, all great music centers. But I tell you what, the people in the Midwest support live music like no other place. Mm -hmm. It's just been, it's been a real pleasure for me to uh, to be here now, and it's a pleasure to sell out the Wild E. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> you know, yeah. no doubt. That's how I put it. You guys just sold right. out the Wild E. You yeah. guys are going to have a second night. That's right. We've had it a second night, and we're working on selling that one out. Too. Nice. There you go. So we we're well on the way. I think we're close to at least a couple of hundred seats sold for that second night. So there's plenty of seats available, and and the dates on that. Uh, Saturday, November 18th is sold out, and then we are doing Sunday, November the 19th, which there are seats available for that night at wildytheater.com. There you go. So, Sunday, November 19th. Yep. 30th anniversary, Rogers and Neen House. And, and he, you know, he said, uh, he, he, who did you say that he jammed with? Oh, the all, uh, hanging out with the Allman Brothers. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's when he said that I had my memory tickled, and I'm not too good at yeah. memory. <laughs> uh, but I feel like there was a connection to you and Old and in the way. Well, Vassar Clements. Vassar yep. Clements. Yeah. There you yep. go. I, I I was trying to put it together in my head, uh, and I, you uh, you went and picked him up from the airport. That's right. There that you was go. The first okay. time it, I met him. Yeah. The tumblers are are because are, are, I kept thinking, uh, you know, he he liked jam with the guys yeah. from yeah. holding in the way, and you know, it's Garcia. Oh yeah, and, yeah. And, and you know, to an old dad, it's like <laughs> that was a great album. So oh, uh, yeah. another thing, and this will tie right into the beginning. Yeah, another big name. All right, that matters right now know. <laughs> for a 30 year anniversary is a guy we all know by Soup. That's right. Okay. Because okay. it was Soup Ronda that united 
Rogers and Nina. That's correct. Yeah. Soup Granda of the Ozark Mountain Daredevils. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. People are not catching And of the Garbanzos. It's a long way to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and he said, yeah. it's a long way to heaven, but it's a short way to Nashville, so you guys get down there with me. That's right. And That's uh, right. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And we both arrived in Nashville uh, almost uh, about the same time in November of 93. And uh, then we finally met somewhere right after that. <laughs> and here we are. Yeah. All these years later. Mm-hmm. I See, when he, his build up, I kept thinking, is he going to say Crosby? Who's he going to say? <laughs> <laughs> I was getting <kidding> Crosby. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready for soup. Scott right. met him and uh, Terry, he got an email from him. <laughs> yeah, I got soup by him twice. Three. No, I thought it was three times. Okay. We're, we're working on the, the third time. The third time was just a threat. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, yeah. the trademark for the birds was Michael Clark's. Yeah. That's correct. And he you did. guys were playing with him. Yes, as the birds mm-hmm. or the birds then, featuring Michael Clark. But right. yeah, you know how promoters are. Anytime right. they just conveniently leave off the yep. featuring Michael Clark. Part. Now that's interesting yeah, sure. because you brought something up that we didn't really dive hard into once, and that is that you know there's only one member of the birds in that band, right? In that, yes. And you got to go out now and sing in front of a hardcore birds audience, <laughs> right? That's looking for these aren't the same guys. <laughs> so, do you got any stories where that didn't go as well as? Uh, yeah, well, it was always a challenge, you know. I mean, but we were always really uh, constantly up front with who people were coming to see and who they were not coming to see. Yeah. Um, I I do I remember. It seems like it was Cincinnati or somewhere. Where we were playing a show in the downtown area, sort of a matinee kind of time, and after sound check, we had a little time to kill, so we ran down to this neighborhood bar to get a beer. And while we were in there, this some a person came up to me saying, "Hey, Roger, man, it's great having y'all here." And I was going, "You know, I'm not Roger, <laughs> I'm Terry Rogers." And they're going, "Oh no, man." We know who you are, you, and, and I was no, I couldn't couldn't convince him that I was not Roger McGuinn. But uh, <laughs> there were but, those uh, times too. But. Look, Scott's got the twelve string. I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, uh, that guy right. must have been eight miles high. <laughs> right. So then, uh, uh, Michael Clark passes away, and that's when Crosby come and got the name. Right. No, he was well. Um, he eventually got it. To, 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 Trademark was owned by Michael Clark and Steve Green. Okay. Steve Green, who was his manager and booking agent. Okay. And um, so after Michael passed, uh, basically it was Steve and Michael's widow that owned the trademark. And eventually uh, Steve sold it to, okay. da- to David Crosby. Right, right, right. And then you guys started the Bird Celebration. Well, that was part of the... We were the Bird Celebration out there touring for quite some time after Michael passed. Okay. And um, and then once David did finally acquire the trademark of the name, that's when we stopped touring as the Bird Celebration. Right, but those were members of the Birds, too. Skip Batten. Skip Batten and, and Gene uh, Parsons, Gene were, the, Parsons were the first yeah. configuration of that band was was went right at the beginning of Scott and, and I working together. Uh, Soup introduced me to Scott. We got together. I said, yeah, he's the guy. Skip said, I'm going to bring back in Gene Parsons, who was the drummer in the Birds from like, what, 68 or 67 through 73, I believe. And um, so that was a lot of fun. It What's interesting pretty- to me about the bird story with their drummers is that none of them were really drummers. <laughs> right. right, it was a bongo player in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, and 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 Gene, of course, is a banjo right. player, and and uh, a good one. Yeah, <laughs> Gib Gilbo was he was playing in a band with Gib, and their drummer left for whatever reason, and Gib when when he when Gene arrived at the rehearsal with his banjo, Gib was going, you know, man. You would be a great drummer. I just, you know, and convinced him, and there's the rest is history. So. Yeah, so, you know, if you're in Laurel Canyon Gam. during those days, and you're hanging out with Vito and the boys, and you're finding those dancers very interesting because you're on some heavy psychedelics, <laughs> probably or it may have been coming from, uh, you know, a military base nearby. We don't know. That's right. We can't allegedly, confirm or deny allegedly. that. Allegedly. <laughs> but apparently, you didn't have to be the greatest musicians in the world to fool people at that point and uh 
the birds had a rough start at the beginning, from what I understand, and were had they were basically being trained during sure, that yeah. time on Chris, how to play. Chris switching from mandolin to bass, and yeah, and uh, you know, it's so. just a very interesting story. And you guys have uh, got to live part of that, so pretty interesting. Yeah, it's been a it's been a long, strange trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> And it continues to be a long, strange trip. <laughs> Scott's being awful awesome quiet over there. What do you got going on? I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. No, if, 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 you know, if you're talking <clears throat> talking birds, you need to talk to Terry. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> what I can talk to you about is uh, the speakeasy that I mentioned earlier. Uh, <laughs> Does that, that place still exist? I don't think it still exists. No. Do you? Which one is it? The oh, one, the one out in the middle of nowhere. There was one Breeze. out in Breeze, yeah. yeah. Between Bree, it was kind of between Breeze and Germantown, right, right. there. It was a pretty and sized probably, place with a it was big sh- balcony and it stuff. It was huge, like the uh, the above the uh, above the stage was uh, at least two stories tall, and it had rails to hang the lights on. We had to have like a thirty foot ladder, mm-hmm. and, and the bar was kind of in the middle of everything, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the uh, what was the guy's name? Yeah, Larry the Schneider. owners, the um, owners, Larry Schneider, Larry, Larry, <laughs> and man, that that's guy. not a mob name, but. Boy. No, but that, that, he, he was like he was pretty creepy sometimes. Like I remember it was like we did a show there with Head East, right? And things went bad, and and he was like talking about putting his military blues on. <laughs> he had him hanging up yeah. back there in the bar right. too. Like, oh, we can't send this guy over the edge. We'll all oh no be eaten lead, and it wouldn't take much. Yeah, I, I yeah, do I remember. Were... I do remember this about it. I don't know if you remember this, but uh, uh, on set breaks. We would always go outside, and there was a drive-in down the road where you could see the movie. You couldn't hear it, but you could watch the movie while you were uh, getting ready for your second break. That's funny that I don't... Well, no, actually, it's not that funny that I don't remember it. (laughs) It's funny Uh, that I do. (laughs) That's what's funny. (laughs) I'm impressed. (laughs) I I know what you did remember is like when you go to collect your money, you're looking at a... Go big, ahead. Big old horse pistol. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Telling you, you didn't mess yeah. with that guy. Yeah. That was one of those and, places you don't want to mess around, man. He'd make it very clear. He'd, you know, you just set it up on top of a stack of papers, uh-huh. like plop it down, you know, and start <laughs> counting money. Yeah. Did you guys ever play up in Benel at the Coliseum? That time mm. I mobbed up. That was Capone right <laughs> that there. Was before my time. Before oh, my time. Oh no, no, that that place was open until the nineties. Yeah, man. it was. I well, actually got to play there. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, I, I did. I did go there once when I was after. I was in Nichols, and we, I, I want to say it was the music room that we played that night in Wood River, and somebody said, "Hey, let's all go to the Coliseum," and I and I, we we did. I, but what I remember was there were mushrooms involved. Nice, <laughs> of course. And and the other thing that I remember was when we left, I walked out, and it was daylight, and I'm thinking, "Oh my God, I've got about an hour and a half drive <laughs> to get home," uh. and oh, it was crazy, but. but I do remember it. I, I, I do remember. Uh, yeah. Nichols. So, so there's, there's, there's an old band of his. <laughs> so suppose, like a, supposedly. Acousticity. Acousticity? It's a tongue twister. Yeah, it is. Uh, supposedly that Coliseum Ballroom was built by Capone. I mean, it was kind of weird that it was that big of a place. I mean, that there was an upstairs yeah. and backstairs back room for the bands. Mm-hmm. It, and it was in the middle of nowhere, this little cow town. But the story is Capone built it. And he would have the trucks of liquor sent there and from there was a distribution center that st- stored l- liquor yeah, in the okay. basement and i don't think that's it. just a story i'm pretty sure oh, that's fact it's fact yeah <laughs> it's fact yeah they use the old uh, lines for uh still where they put the stills and apparently when they tore the place down they yeah. found tunnels yeah ah. so <laughs> if it's not real we're making it real right now that's, <laughs> that's too good a story <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I missed uh, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it was a, well, you know, a weird place out in the middle of nowhere. But cool. We talk about it all the time about this area being a hub. Mm-hmm. I mean, you go five yeah, well, hours in any direction, and you know you're right. playing another city. That's yep. right, right. And some nice ones. You know, Memphis sure. and Chicago, two music towns. You got Nashville not too far away. Right. But, you know, I was just in Kansas City Kansas for music city. two weeks ago. Man, did some can to music and barbecue. Yeah, <laughs> Columbia, Missouri. A lot of venues Columbia, there. Played yeah. there a lot. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, that's a good reason to uh, stay around here. That's what Soup did, too. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. they wanted the Ozark Mountain Daredevils to go out to California. He's like, cleaner water here. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll stay here. Cleaner <laughs> air, water, yeah. and soil at that Everything. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, before the 
elast plasticity. I was trying to take your acousticity and turn plastic into it, and I just bottled on that one. I, I think I need to pregame a little more. I'll, I'll be back well, in five minutes. Go. Well, I'm I'll join to, you. I'm trying to get us back to the Rogers and Neen House, who are having a band, and I'm going to try to guess what the lineup is. Okay. Because it could okay. be anything. All right. I'm going with I'm going with Polite. Oh, yeah. Jim's yeah. always there on the drums, for okay. sure. Now, the next one's going to be hard, because <laughs> it, could be, it could be Scott's buddy from Acousticity. <laughs> Acousticity. Well, now, Tim played, was a drummer in Acousticity. Okay. okay. The second second. Okay, I'm getting drummer. confused then. Hmm, who would be the bass player? That's always <laughs> the key to it. Well, right. it, it has a lot to do with it. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's always been a uh, the joke here. Yeah, when exactly. We come, it's, you know, which which whatever bass player basically decides what the group is because it's it's the the three of us and whoever plays bass. <laughs> and I still have. Well, we have Dave right. Toretta playing bass. Oh, players. you're going with Dave. Yeah. Ooh, Does that nice. mean Steve's going to come along? <coughs> Steve uh, Scorfina? No, Steve's no. not. Um, slated to be there but okay. we do have a, a younger gentleman that's a great guitarist that's going to be joining us for oh tyler armstrong, tyler armstrong. Hey, armstrong. Hey, yeah. oh, we've nice. already heard about him yeah, yeah. i know you have he's the future <laughs> man he yeah. touring yeah. with the uh, blackberry smoke right that's now. right oh, i that's thought right. he was oh, nice right. Right. last i saw he was no, with fields he is with fields well, Field. yes. they know but they're opening for blackberry oh, oh, oh gotcha, gotcha. In Florida. i thought you meant he, i thought you meant he was playing in blackberry uh, smoke. yeah yeah right yeah down in florida yeah. Nice. I like those guys are fun. Yeah. He fun just action. jammed with uh, Artemis Pyle recently. Yeah, right. Set uh, in with him and uh, Marshall Tucker when they were in Poncho right. Beach. Yeah. So that'll be nice. Oh, yeah. Him. Yeah. So, but if Steve was there, then it'd be the real macaws. <laughs> That's right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm getting confused, but I'm throwing it back again. Soup on, in the soup right, on base right. for that too. Right. Soup. But, uh, for the real macaws. That's why they're real. But we will have uh, Bill Murphy on keyboards. <laughs> okay. He's usually... No, he's not the Bill guy. Murray. You always go there on the <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Bill Murphy, yeah. son of Murphy Brown. <laughs> and we're also having Tom Murphy, Bill's brother, who's an amazing uh, mandolinist or mandolin oh. player, however you... Whatever is the correct I way like to like the man Let's yeah. go with that. Yeah. <laughs> so you got all these guys on for two nights? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. man. And also, uh, also Chris Fabick on percussion. Yeah. Nice. He's, yeah. he's uh, started working with us in 4 and 20. I was going to say. And uh, he's awesome. I this just, group I is just love him, man. getting closer to that size, 4 and 20. Yeah, it's a, this is going to be a crowd <laughs> of us there at the wild. Yeah, well, we're not done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. John so, Mond is going to show up. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that we know of anyway. But. Yeah. If he's in the crowd, you'll invite him up, I'm sure. <laughs> well, we have yeah, the great yeah. Jim Stevens on saxophone. Okay. Uh, Pat Liston on. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure no, he's, he's working. working. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I, first time I met you, I think you were with Pat Liston, the, the Pat Liston band. It yeah, was, it yeah was, the uh, Sheldon we did. The uh, show. Yeah, it was, uh, man, it's been many moon ago mm -hmm. but yeah he, he uh, he's in form 22 but he's not on no? at the very beginning right at the very beginning okay gotcha yeah there's been a long line of people in and out of that how the gig go recently it was, it was great yeah. yeah yeah did they open the full thing up or did no you? no no they did not it, it, it was, was they always pair us with uh an act that came in there that's paying for all the production right. and the staging yeah. and everything yeah. like that i wasn't sure they, if uh, that was happening this yeah, i was gonna say they they've got kind of a good little thing thing going there yeah, where they'll they bring do. a band in that band pays for the production and the next night they just have you know some guys that, that are more local or whatever they shut mm -hmm. it in half so they're not paying all the staff and then it's, the tickets are often free yeah or easy to get a hold of from us you know. so so then you pay for drinks and parking yeah and and man i've been over there to see some of these shows in st charles, arena, st. Right? charles arena and right. if you haven't been over to catch these shows man best show i've ever seen in my life was there weird yeah. al yankovic weird I al yankovic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> i am not kidding i had no idea what i was about to see mm -hmm. and it blew my mind he's got four guys with him and they play every one of those songs wow. and all those different genres and you know what? Most of the pop versions of those songs, I don't even know. But right. what Weird Al does to them makes them way more interesting. <laughs> I, I would love that. I'd, I'd love to see them. Yeah, um, and he did full costumes. You know, he had video segues in between so, so he could change. change. Yeah. yeah, it was nonstop fun. It was That's a great. blast. Hardest working man in show business since James Brown died. <laughs> And I went and saw John Anderson from Yes 
with the playing with the band geeks there. Um, it's less than a year ago, and it was it was just fantastic. Yeah, yeah. it's hard to believe he can still do it like that. <laughs> but the oh, Wild E, where you guys were playing. Oh yeah! I oh did. man, that's one of my favorite. I love being in that place. Yeah. There's not a bad seat in the That's place. Right. No, there really isn't. And they're comfortable seats. It's it's not even that it's that you can you can see the stage great from everywhere, but they're comfortable if you get right. a seat. And uh, just a beautiful venue. Yeah. November eighteenth is sold out. You got tickets for the Sunday show though. That's uh, correct. The nineteenth. Yes. Wildetheater dot com. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, One eyed parrot. One eyed parrot. There's a, a a link right on the front page, our home page of our website. There's a picture of, of us with the information about the wild eating. Just click on that picture. It'll take you right to the right place. Right. Oh, I don't All right, know. right. So let's uh, get into some Friday night pig pen, and uh, we might bring up the elderly boys after that. <laughs> just, just in case <laughs> something might happen uh, since the last show they did. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> Friday night, the Alice at the VFW in Alton. Gary Garcia's Lonesome Blues down at the Conservatory, 8.30 to 11.30. Pianos at uh, Raging Cajun at 9.00 and Up All Night, 7.30 to 11.30 at Fast Eddie's in Alton. Steve Ewing duo. Oh, Steve yeah. Steve is there you uh, go. from The Urge. If you right. don't know that, yeah. He'll be playing Bakers and Hale, 7 to 11. Also owns hot dog stands. He does. <laughs> or hot dog joint. I don't know. That's All right. that. Steve's hot dogs. Right. Logan Chapman. He put a lot of thought into that name. <laughs> Logan Chapman, 6 to 9 at Georgia's Local Brew in Jerseyville. Dr. Martin's Flannel Brigade. <laughs> All right. Probably doing 90s music. Yeah. Well. <laughs> 8.30 to uh, 12.30 a.m. down. Not Georgia to be confused Brigade. with Mr. Martin's Flannel Brigade, because Mr. Martin did not go to college for four years like Dr. Martin's Flannel Brigade. Okay. I'm just saying. This, no, there's a fine. pedigree here. Okay, let's <laughs> pedigree away. Let's pedigree our way right down to the speakeasy in Granite City. All right. Which I brought up. Who's who's playing so, there? So, have you guys heard of this place? Which place? The, the Speakeasy in Grand. I City. have, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brenda Whitaker uh, is a friend oh, yeah. of ours, and she's was telling us about it, and she's uh, threatening to have us in there too. Uh, okay, yeah. It's kind of neat. They got like a museum type uh, atmosphere in the main bar, and then there's a back area. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's is, a, yeah. Okay, now I my my brain woke up yes it's a really cool place <laughs> yeah, yeah. A really cool place <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, lo- I loved it i was i mean i could hang out here so, i have uh, no idea I have I no- just, oh yeah it's great <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i just started I hearing about it though recently so i don't know how long it's been there but uh it's pretty new yeah mm-hmm. yeah and then that's the one with the uh machine gun alley yeah, right outside of it too so mm-hmm. so it's that's got like two stages gangster stage related to yeah. just since we were on a gangster topic <laughs> the one in Breeze may or may not have been owned by a gangster. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> we, all we know is a scruffy-looking nerf herder will be playing at the speakeasy. <laughs> in Grand uh, who's my nerf herder? <laughs> They're going to lower the bar name. down at uh, Granite City. All uh, right. Patrick's. All Jorge right. Eddie's. Lower the bar. Toxic Johnny. All right. At the back bar just in talk, Just talk to Toxic Johnny. We're going to have him on in a couple weeks down the line. I think maybe right at the beginning of December. Some sad news out of the back bar. Oh, no. Yeah. Marion right. Gilson put a video up uh, as of, I think, December 18th. I wrote it down here. Let me check. Uh, December 18th, she was going to uh, step down. And she mentioned it was closing. So, I don't know. All right. Well, yeah. I hate to hear that. December 16th, so. I hate to hear that because if uh, if you want to get drunk, they pour strong drinks at the mm. back bar. <laughs> yeah, that's right across from Wild E, so you're parked there practically anyway. You're, you're kind of parked <laughs> right by the back bar, so you can stagger in after the Wild E and stagger out a little bit more. <laughs> after you see the Furious Bongos, who I just seen there. <laughs> All right. Outstanding. Zappa yeah, I, band. I missed that. I was so yeah. bummed when I missed and that one. Chad Wackerman on drums, who played for seven years with Zappa, so oh, yeah, wow. they tore it up. But, uh. The big shows, the 18th and 19th, and now the 19th specifically because... That's uh, right. Yeah. Is there still to. one lone seat? No, seat's? that, that one got sold. Okay. I went and checked today, and it's now officially sold out once again. The 18th. <laughs> yeah, one, one seat mysteriously popped up for, for the 18th. <laughs> See, I, 
I'm the kind of guy, if I had a show with one seat, I'm, I'm going to buy that seat. Just, just like, <laughs> we yeah. call it sold out. Give it to a homeless guy. <laughs> right. right. Fill, fill it up. I was uh, just yeah. thinking, as close as you guys are on Sunday, we could just give the rest of them away. I don't know. Well. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be a lot of unhappy people that paid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you might want to okay. talk to Al Canal about that move. We know who's <laughs> giving it away, Scott Marlin. He'll be a dinner on Friday night from six to nine. He's giving away. He charged me twenty bucks. What do you mean? He doesn't charge it, Big Daddy. Does he? Uh, I don't know, dude. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't think about. they charge at the pump, at the chop house either. Eighteen eighteen, where musicology is Friday night. Uh, all right. Uh, and then uh, Butch Moore. Yeah, he's going to be at the Stagger nice. Inn with uh, Matt Gaddigan on Friday night, five to eight. Oh, I got to get him back on, man. Yeah, it's been years since we've had him on. Good yeah, because uh, he started firing up uh, an open mic, and I'm drawing a blank on the name of the place because uh, it's on Tuesdays, but it's the old Reese's. It's okay. like a hamburger joint. Right. So that's cool. He's he's doing it in Edwardsville. Mike Sonderregger, 7 to 10 at the Cabin in Tootie Creek on Friday, and Carrie Lee up at the Rustic in Warden. Uh, Swain Productions is going to present oh. Just a Girl tribute to uh, No Doubt and Jagged tribute to Alanis Morissette. Down at the Lincoln Theater huh. in Belbo, you guys ever play the Lincoln? Yes, Theater? Yeah. a couple yeah. of times. It's, yeah. We like it. Yeah. What about the, nice. the Miners in uh, Collinsville? Not yet, but I'm I'm working on that. Yeah, that'll be a good yeah. one. Yeah, I saw one there way back. Uh, a group was called Children. Oh, it was Mike Saffron from Pavlov's Dog. Okay. Yeah. a great band called Children, and I, I did go to see that one time by myself too. Was that pre Pavlov's Dog or after? After. Okay. Yeah. Great. Can I find stuff on them? Like I don't think so. No, dang. Um, well, I mean, you might. I'm so jealous. Not of officially. You. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lazy Lester's playing Friday up in uh, all right. Mount Olive at C Joe's, nine o'clock. Excellent. Yeah. That's a. Uh, oh, and then we got Fat Kitty. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you love that Fat one. Fat Kitty at Martin's Lanes and Root House. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good name. And we, it's, we, it's, <laughs> it's not as good as that. What was the one we used to hear? The Pussy Cat and the Swallowtails. Yeah. I don't know what happened to that band. <laughs> Never seen him play, but what a great name. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Pussycat and the Swallowtails. You know, we failed to mention with Bell Bell's uh, Experience Live Music Row, which oh, yeah. is still going on at multi uh, venues teaming together to create one atmosphere of a scene. And they've got a sponsor, Neutral Vodka, and they uh, help throw in on the uh, advertising so the whole town gets it. And, and, so, and so for well over a year now, probably a year and a half, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, they have like five venues, and they stagger the bands where they're not all oh, playing at the same time. It, it, it's cool. the, the fact that they kept something. I mean, because you, you know how hard it is to keep oh, something yeah. like that going. Sure. The fact that they've kept it going this long is pretty impressive. Of course, it helps when you got a sponsor. Right. It always makes it easy when there's money there mm -hmm. to make things happen. Rogers and Dean House with a road gig on Friday. I guess that's a road gig for both of you guys down to Pacific. Well, yeah, 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 a little ways, yeah, yeah. yeah. a little bit. <laughs> yeah, what's that place like? Uh, Brown Jerry's. Brown Jerry's it's Blues great. and Barbecue. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. We always love playing there. Uh, Jerry, uh, what is his last name? Holloway. Holloway, he's a great guy, and and uh, and of course the food's great, and uh, they have a nice he's a formal big red, really well player. Oh, okay, oh, there you go. Yeah, nice. Let me see here. Jerry. Hmm. <laughs> Jerry. Not a lot of a clue there. I had to think about that one. Well, he said his last name. What was his Holloway. last name? Holloway. Holloway. Jerry Holloway. I don't remember that. Yeah. Anyways. But, uh, and then uh, Saturday night. Yeah, it's a new place for uh, the first time we're playing there anyway. Johnny's Hideout in High Ridge, Missouri. High Ridge. <laughs> I, I, I can uh, see some hideouts being yeah. in High Ridge. <laughs> Yeah. Speaking of a speakeasy, you know, you never, <laughs> uh, if you're yeah, hiding out. You know. So it looks like you got more mileage than he does this weekend. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that happens. He has to come over here sometime. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he gets to drive up to Springfield, you know. Are you still Pigpen's neighbor? <laughs> Who's name? Which one? Uh, yeah, yeah, sort of. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Sort of. Yeah, we're right down the street. Right. Sort of. Right around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> I could hit his house with a rock if I tried. No, I couldn't do that. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, 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 right around the corner off. Uh, I forget what you're on. Not here. I'm, I'm on Harris, and you're on. Uh, uh, 
Um, uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't uh, matter. Uh, Tobacco uh, Road, that's where you're at. <laughs> that's, that's where you're yeah, at. Afford, anyway, uh, so, <laughs> so what do we got going on Saturday that you were talking about? Well, are you talking about, oh, we are talking about Johnny's Hideout. Oh, yeah, right? Johnny's Hideout. There you go. Yeah. Is it Hideout or Hideaway? Hideout. Hideout, yeah. okay. There, I think there's another one called the Hideaway. I don't yeah. know. Johnny's just Hideaway is this couch that comes out that Johnny has. <laughs> <laughs> I slept on it for three months, I know. <laughs> so uh, acoustics only on that one? What do you guys do? Yeah, yeah. Do, when we're doing the duo, it's pretty much, yeah, just acoustics. Unless it's, uh, we're doing, Scott will bring out an electric uh, now and then to play on a uh, George Harrison song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does Tim ever try to like sneak in on some of those gigs? Like, hey, you know, nope, I really um, like to play this weekend. We do have a, a friend, uh, Todd Jones, that uh, does come to town from Kansas City, and and usually stays a weekend and plays bass with us, which yeah. is always really fun. Todd, has, Todd was a, a member of Acousticity as well. Has, oh, yeah. That's who I was trying to remember. Oh, okay, the bass player right there. Yeah, Todd Jones. Todd Jones. I should have remembered it's a it's a baseball player's yeah. name. Son of Mickey remember. Jones from yeah, the Monkees. Yeah. <laughs> who was the son of Frederick Jones, the founding father? I don't know. Does Soup ever surprise you and show up? <laughs> like, he did. He's used to once in a while, but he's he's been so busy here yeah. lately. They they've gotten a, a new manager uh, with the Daredevils that's yeah. really keeping them. Well, they, oh, they, 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 they put out a about, new. Uh, they put out an album a while back, didn't? A couple years ago. Yeah, a couple recently years back. for sure. Yeah, and, uh, and well, yeah, for, for them that's pretty recent because right, it had been right, a hiatus. Right. There had been quite a hiatus. Right. And, uh, I so figured they, soup sandwiches would just keep growing and growing. <laughs> do the garbanzos. There's so many of them. Yeah, yeah there's mm-hmm. the sandwiches. There's but once the, the croutons heat? left. I mean, you know, <laughs> are the croutons? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He sent me a uh, an envelope just full of CDs of his <laughs> bands, mm-hmm. and they're all great they're all fun they're mm-hmm. all but, but that garbanzos man that psychedelic polka yeah it's man. just like it's so yeah. it's so weird <laughs> yeah. oh yeah and you have to see them to really appreciate it <laughs> they look great all these old hairy men and gowns and dresses and yeah <laughs> girl scout uniforms and <laughs> that's hot <laughs> <laughs> Only when Linda Ronstadt uh, <laughs> uh, wore the Cub Scout uniform. <laughs> well, you know, it's a, it's a little ways away, so we really can't predict the weather for the weekend. Uh, you guys are playing the Wild View, but that's important with you guys because every once in a while the power goes out. Yeah, there's no tornadoes in the <laughs> forecast that I'm, uh, I don't think that time of year, I think we're a little safer than usual. Yeah. But, you know, I should never say that. I'm, I'm yeah, right, myself. right. Blizzard shows yeah. up. <laughs> a November tornado would be rare, though. I would have <laughs> to would. say. That's not out of the question around here. Right. But we bring it up because it happened. It did happen. When you guys played. Was that the first time you guys played the No, morning? it was our Younger Than Yesterday uh, right. show so with our, our CD release yeah. party. And um, the band another, played on. Yeah. We, we came down to the front of the stage and with our acoustics and told they had the 300 people sitting there and he said well you actually do have to really be totally quiet yes. for this to work <laughs> and that they did and you know oh god i gotta cough great. i gotta cough okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so was that, a, and that built that wildy theater has been hit by tornadoes on multiple occasions yeah. uh i mean it got totally like wiped out like in the 70s i think uh, one hit it, and they had to rebuild the the structure for the most part. Yeah, the back side of yeah, it. The okay. back side yeah. of it, yeah. I'd heard that. I, I don't remember exactly when it happened, though. Yeah. But. I remember going there as a kid uh, on Christmas. Uh, my grandpa worked for one of the oil companies, you know, Standard Oil, whatever it was. And we'd go there on Christmas and watch a movie. And then Santa would come out and give, like, all the boys would get a football and all the girls would get, like, a jump rope. You know, every, every, you know, every, <laughs> there'd be a boy toy and a girl toy and everybody got the same thing. But everybody got a toy, you know. Wow. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's like, how come companies don't do that anymore? You know, that's what, that's what kept people buying. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, congratulations. 30-year yeah. anniversary. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and, thank uh, you very much. I'm it's... trying to bring up some memories of your 30 years together. And I'd like to bring up one word. Okay, and let's see if you guys can tell me why that matters to Rogers <laughs> and Neenhaus, okay? And the word is water. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
That's right. Take it, Scott. <laughs> well, <laughs> is this going to be like the Fry Festival? <laughs> I don't know, but it, it, it's kind of cool to watch their reaction because they gave me goosebumps because to me it's a very important mo- moment yeah. Uh, yeah. between two friends when, when you do what you're about to talk. The, well, the first time Terry and I got together, this is after we met like a couple of days prior, and um, I showed up at his place after climbing, you know, 14 flights of stairs i was about to pass out and said sorry i'm late but you know and um we uh i noticed that we were both wearing the same jack type jacket the same guitar not different guitars but guitar pin on the lapel the same briefcases the same brand guitars the same type of case all these things, and I'm thinking, well, oh, this is just kind of weird. <laughs> um, this guy's been reading and, my mail. Yeah. And so, the first song he plays for me of, of when it was his, and it was a song called Pirates. And the whole time I'm thinking, well, this is cool because I just finished a song called On the Water. So, we, we, we both have this water thing, you know. So, when he got done, uh, I said, "Well, I've got one for you," and I played "On the Water," and that's that's those are the first two songs that we heard of each other, you yeah, know. Cool. <clears throat> and uh, it was, it, you know, it just seemed like, well, you know, we have some. And uh, and then as Terry spoke the other day on another station about about the vocal harmonies and stuff, which is one of the one of the th- reasons I think that we we've hung together as long as we have. I'll let Terry take it from there. Well, you know, just because it's it, when you're a, a natural singer and harmony singer, and it's just when you find someone else that also is that uh, type of singer, you know, it's just it's hard to find. So, you know, you want to stick with that that close harmony thing. And of course, we just uh, we've both grown up our entire careers doing that. So, coming together and um, discovering that we had that in common you know was was very important but back to the water uh, aspect of it you know we also have a great um, video from with the song on the water that scott wrote that uh, our friend joe Guerra, that uh, is a video production person with hired gun is his company and he proposed to us or asked us if we would be okay with him pitching to the missouri department of conservation for them to fund us this a video of that song and do it in a lot of different water locations around the state of Missouri and bring in a lot of our friends and so it was a great experience and it's a great video if you if you haven't seen it it's easy to find now is that on the empty rooms uh, release that song that is yes uh huh I mean could you guys talked in the past that uh, the yesterday band could be actually called you know the members. Uh, because you know that was just kind of a quick name you guys come up with well younger than yesterday yeah yeah, Yeah. i mean to to keep from getting sued you know right yeah (laughs) to try (laughs) yeah right that's that's tim playing on that Tim polite yeah and 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 tim's the drummer on all of our projects and uh, all of the groups that we have including at the wildy coming up and uh, but you're asking about specifically younger than yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Michael Curtis. Curtis is the bass player in yeah, that see, it's configuration. And of course, he wrote Southern Cross, another yeah. water kind of uh, <laughs> sailing song. I and guess that's you call it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's yeah. That group is Scott, and myself, uh, Michael Curtis, and Tim Polite. And uh, we had a few guests on that. And. Um, and then, of course, then there's, there's the real macaws, which we've already mentioned. That's our group with Soup Grande on bass. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> same guys, new bass player. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's how it goes with these guys. <laughs> Rogers, Neen House, one of the bass players, and Tim. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, hey, uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah Shumaki Springman. Uh, yep. She uh, got together with some buddies and. Uh, Got a new release coming out. I, she told me about that a few weeks back. So I, is uh, is it out already, or is it getting ready to come out? I think it's about to drop, or okay. did today, maybe. Okay, maybe today. Well, we're gonna have to get but, her on to talk about that. Yeah, all the streaming locations should be down at the uh, Flock Food Truck lot. That's what it says from six to nine on uh, Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day to all the veterans yeah. out there, and thank mm-hmm. you for your service. 
Also, Saturdays, the piano's down at Raging Cage. Naked Soul, 2 to 6, and Up All Night, 7.30, Fast Eddie's. Here's a salute to veterans right here with the Glendale Riders. I got yeah. two tickets. Did you? Uh, you got yeah. two tickets? Awesome. Yeah. You want one? I got an extra one. Well, well, I Maybe. I've, I got to look see what date that is. Well, it's, gonna, uh, it's Saturday. Is it this Saturday? Yeah, a salute to veterans. Oh, baby. duh. Yeah, you said. Sorry. I, I, got that, I, I got our next guest texting me. I'm distracted. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, that's out of uh, Lewis and Clark College at Hathaway Hall. The uh, Glendale Riders do that every year. Jake Weber and Lonesome Drifters out of Bakers and Hale from 7 to 11. The Intrusions doing a Veterans Day bash out at the uh, VFW in Cottage Hills at 8 o'clock. Uh, Horns Up down at the Pump House in Wood River at 9. Cabin Fever down at the Junkyard in Wood River starting at 9, going to 1 a.m. The Fleetwood Family in South Roxanne at Sparky's from 2 to 5. Levi Tucker up at George's Local Brew from 6 to 9. On Saturday, Wicked Mojo out at the Hog Pit from 2 to 6. In Grafton, Rockabilly Revival 3 to 7 at the Grafton Winery Brew House. Uh, Ray Band at the uh, Pub in Grafton from 1 to 5. And uh, Grand Opening with uh, Katie Hubbard 4 to 9 p.m. at Forever After Banquet and Event Center in Pontoon Beach. A new venue coming All there. Right. So, uh, Cool. One goes down, another pops up, pig pen. Yep, I'm always happy to hear that. That's good. Dr. Martin's Flannel Brigade, 8.30 to 12.30 a.m. down at Deutsch, second night, right? Pontoon Beach, five-point plan underway at uh, Patrick's in Granite City on Saturday at 9. One of their last few gigs for the American Originals. They're going to break that one up, 8 o'clock until midnight at Teagan's in Granite City. Flip side light at Mindy's in Granite City from 7 to 10. The fabulous Freebirds from six and nine, and Big Daddies and Edwards. So I'm wondering, have you ever been playing like a Birds tribute, and someone says, "Play Freebird"? That's a bird song. In every gig we've ever played, we have someone that wants to hear Freebird, right? Or right. just say they want to hear it. Yeah. Right. You got to look at them. Just say, so you know what? I'm going to do it. Security. Yeah. I dare you to say it again. I'll do it. <laughs> if I leave here, yeah, start taunting them with it. No, I just flip them off and say, "Here, no charge." <laughs> Here's a free bird for you. <laughs> Want another one? I got two. <laughs> oh. Oh, also going on Saturday, Scott Marlin, 2 to 5, the Foundry Public House in Edwardsville, Lanny and Julie at uh, Viva La Fiesta in Edwardsville from 6 to 9, Strings and Keys at Lyle's Tavern in Maryville from 7 to 10, Sweet Bottom at the Cabin at Judy Creek in Glen Carver from 7 to 11, Every Little Thing out the Prairie Inn in Dorsey from 5 to 9, Hookie going to Hookie. Highland. 8 p.m. <laughs> till 12 a.m. E.L. Flanagan's in Highland. Jake Keasley playing the one-year anniversary of the Rustic up in Warden at 7 All o'clock. Right. And it's uh, Marlene Edwards' 90th birthday. With Flip the Frog, from six to ten. <laughs> I love it. At the Dew Drop in and down, and she's a dancer, guys. That's why she lived to be ninety years old. She gets out and sees local music and dances the night away. All right. I yeah. I taught her a few moves. You did? Yeah. I taught her how to spin on that pole. And I, mean, I, I don't know, poor Marley. I heard you talk to the uh, Screaming Eagles Jam Band. I, I I did. They go by another name when they do original. BC Homegrown. That's right. And uh, they're playing as the uh, Screaming Eagles Jam Band on Saturday from 7 to 10 at St. George's in Carlinville. Butch Moore back at it with Paul Neenhouse the fourth. Relative? <laughs> we believe so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 7 to 10 at the uh, Mississippi Culture in, uh, in Staunton. Zach McFadden and uh, Michael Blakely at the uh, H-Bar in Belleville. Kurt Copeland down at Schmitty's in Belleville. Triple Threat out at Martin's Lane and Root House. And here's... Here's a big one. Mid-Missouri Wrestling Alliance. All right. Feast of Destruction Food Drive. <laughs> Featuring Moondog's last match. Standing room only is all that's available. This will be all a right. South Broadway Athletic Club in St. Louis. And uh, there you go. Moondog's retiring. Okay. Dwarfs, direct hit, and Ultraman over at Red Flag on Saturday at 7 o'clock. And uh, the Pentagram String Band. They're from KC. They'll be playing with Biff Gnarly, Insertion, and Gibby at the Platypus. And so right. that's, hmm. that's Saturday's action. Oh, there you some go. of our bands playing some cool shows. It sounds yeah. like. All right, well, that's, that's some, that, there's always things happening. Anyone saying there's no, nothing to do, shut well, uh, up. 
<laughs> you knew Dwayne Almond and the Almond Brothers down there in Georgia. And Scott, we talked about you know, how the Almond Joys played up here in St. Louis quite a bit. And you guys mentioned, you know, that story. What can you remember about them guys playing up here? I was too young. I yeah. I wasn't around. I remember Steve Scorpina talking about him and, and I think it was Mike Murphy. Hanging outside of some place they couldn't get in because they were too uh, young, and that was so Michael McDonald. Yeah, that's right. I was thinking of that other guy. <laughs> that's, that's Michael McDonald. You're thinking of, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was thinking of, yeah, the guy Michael. We don't bring him up again. Really. <laughs> Anyways, when I looked at him, my mind went right to that guy for some reason. <laughs> Big inside joke there, but anyways, uh, yeah. So, so that had to be what. Uh, mid sixties. That was yeah, probably mid sixties. Uh, so of course I was down in Macon during that time, and that was before they arrived in Macon. Oh wow, check that out. Yeah. So like you invented the Almond Brothers? For <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But your connection was a friend, right? That uh. Well, Scoots Linden was my good friend, and whose oldest brother was Twigs Linden, who was the road manager for the Almond Brothers. Oh, wow. And he was the one that Phil Walden sent to. Uh, Muscle shows that go go check out this guitar player, Dwayne Allman. See what you think, <laughs> and see if you think I should do something with him. And yeah, and of course that's where that started. And Twigs uh, had an a, an apartment, a one bedroom apartment on Orange Street, and he uh, the whole band moved into the apartment. They just had uh, a bunch of mattresses in the daytime. They <laughs> stand them up against the walls. And uh, and then go outside and play cork ball in the in the street and in the side yard and and he also had an old Coke machine in the in the apartment that was filled with Budweiser beer <laughs> and uh, so everyone had something to drink at all times. AJ's Twigs, uh, the middle brother, uh, used to cut school and go over there and and drink Budweiser's in the afternoon and be in high school. You know. <laughs> It's a good way to grow up, right? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, it's just uh, interesting. Once again, you know, a major rock band, uh, Hall of Fame band, St. Louis ties. You know, yeah, yeah. And his right. family's uh, Greg's family's here, right? Devin, Some of those. Devin. Well, Devin Allman yeah. lives here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. but I think he met his wife here or something. Greg did. Oh. Yeah. The, um, Who share? Uh, Devin's mother. <laughs> oh well, well, actually, I think she was. They were out of Texas at that time originally. Yeah, so, but he, they origin eventually moved up here. You know, he met Cher here. I was just thinking of the Beach Boys. You know, Midwest farmer's daughter. So <laughs> southern guy comes up and he finds yeah. a Midwest farmer's daughter. I don't know yeah. if that's how it happened, but in my head, it was happening Look, that way. What What happened that was important is Dwayne Allman found Taj Mahal, and that made a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that made a beautiful thing. That was the uh, the invention of Southern rock. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if any of this well, is Well, Jesse true. Davis was in Taj's band at the time and was a good slide player. Yeah. And they put that song, uh, uh, Statesboro Blues was on that first okay. album. Yeah. And that was, uh, Greg gave that to Dwayne as a gift after Dwayne was pissed off because Greg got him to go horseback riding with him, which Dwayne had no interest in and immediately got thrown off and hurt his arm. And so he was quite angry with Greg. So and Greg uh, left him the new Taj Mahal album and a bottle of Corsica. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and that became his slide. That bottle yeah, became his slide. He took pills out. Hey, I, I can use this. Now, we don't know what he did with the pills, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. We can't confirm or deny those. <laughs> yeah, uh, there, there is another story. I, I'm pretty sure it was Greg Allman where he they were trying to get out of the uh, Dodge uh, the draft, oh, and he oh, shot yeah. himself in the foot. But he put a <coughs> put a target on it or something. Well, you had to make sure you didn't hit any bones, you know. So right. So they put <laughs> and, and when they got to the hospital, they saw the target. And they're like, wait, <laughs> wait. I don't know. I don't know if any of this is true. I'm just I'm just talking. Man. <laughs> you ever you ever see Chuck Berry, Scott? I have, yeah. Yeah. What What's a memory of him? You got you got one of him? Uh, actually, you know, it's funny. The first time I saw him, I mean, and I'd, I'd been a big fan, um, was at the VP Fair, and it was like, 
I, it was like 11 in the morning and it was kind of an overcast day and I think it had rained so there was like some some mud you know where I was standing or like it was there was straw down but you know you move around and then it's mud <laughs> and um Billy Peak was playing with him oh, okay and uh in fact I saw a picture somebody posted on Facebook recently a picture and I was trying to figure out if that one dude in there was me but um <laughs> you know so it, so it was cool I mean it was it was good to see him I, I saw him a few other times since um, and Terry and I uh, were asked to do a um, broadcast from uh, Blueberry Hill. Okay. Joe Edwards invited us down, and it was uh, it was a radio broadcast to the BBC. Mm -hmm. And so we did an interview, and I think we played a couple of songs. We did know. more than that. We played a had a performance. Okay. That, uh, nice. And then uh, Chuck Berry and Johnny Johnson were after us. Nice. So <clears throat> so we hung around and, and got to meet him and, and chat with him and got a great picture together and uh you know that was it, a, it was kind of a cool thing big moment for you huh yeah yeah because yeah. that, that's who you're into the most during you know when you're picking up the guitar and playing it that's your guy right uh, initially yeah. yeah until and then i heard steven stills okay <laughs> and then things changed drastically yeah Suddenly, he was sour grapes on. Mm -hmm. Oh, but I still love Chuck Berry. Songs. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. I was just trying to think of a Stephen Still song, and sour grapes came to mind. I don't know why. <laughs> Not one of his better songs, but I there think, it is. I think we proved our case that uh, the River Bend is a home of rock and roll. I didn't yeah, even bring up go. Miles Davis being born yeah, right, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, right. going to East St. Louis, you take that fusion and put it in with rock and roll, which happened. Yeah, mm -hmm. Zappa made sure of it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. All right, well, man, there, there you go. You tuned in tonight to hear Rogers and Neenhaus talk about their Everybody history, else. and instead, <laughs> instead, we went all the way back to the very beginning because uh, we like to do that. I don't know. Well, hey guys, thanks, uh, thanks yeah, for thanks coming for down. Uh, good luck. You got a sold out show already on the 18th. Yeah, still tickets available on the 19th. The What's 19th. the website? WildyTheater.com is uh, certainly, and go. also there's a link on our website. Uh, one eyed parrot, O N E dash E Y E D P A R R O T. One eyed parrot, yeah, dash it's me pirate thing. Arg, arg, I haven't sat in every single seat there, but I would say probably not a bad seat in the house. Oh, no, there's an, yeah. it's, it's yeah, very sure. true, very so. true. So everybody who doesn't have a ticket, get a ticket for the 19th. The 18th is already sold out. It'll be a great show. It's the 30th anniversary of Rogers and Neen House. Guys, thanks so much for coming down and hanging Thank out with guys. us again. Thank you. Always fun to hang out yeah. with you guys. Big thanks to the sponsors, Halpin Music and Matt Van Voris for, what did you say, Town Club? Yeah, that's whatever, right. whatever he wants to support today. Mojo music. There you go. Uh, and so, uh, thanks to them for uh, ten years of sponsoring us to come down and do this. Everybody, if uh, you're gonna get out, it's actually been seven and a half years. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Just, know. just wanted to clarify that. I don't. I don't. My <laughs> calendars are missing the sevens, so I, I just have to look that is. up today. You kept saying ten, and I'm like, I'm not feeling that. I want to <laughs> see what it is. So yeah, I don't know. I looked it up. Seven and a half years ago. Is that what you it was? Know, up and jumped on and we took go. off. So uh, there you go. Well, we're almost to an anniversary. Thanks to the sponsorship of seven and a half well, years, not the ten. Guys, <laughs> the guys over there are helping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 absolutely. Like you bought absolutely. a lot of guitars there, Scott. I bought. Well, actually, yeah, I bought a couple. <laughs> 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 All right. Thanks again to Rogers and Neenhouse. Everybody, get out and support local music and art.